Hello, good afternoon. Okay. I put my money on sun and solar energy. What a source of power. I hope we don't have to wait until oil and coal run out before we tackle that. Who said that? What year? Thomas Edison in 1931. Um, my name is Pete Rosen. I am the owner of several solar companies in the Caribbean. Um, I've learned a lot in the past 10 years in the solar energy business, and especially in the last six months since Hurricane Irma and Maria came through. Why what I have to tell you is important. Besides sustenance, electricity is the second most important thing in our lives, even more important than than shelter. I mean, we live down here in the islands. We could pitch a tent on a beach. We, it, it costs so much to have it. It's critical in our lives, but we invest almost nothing in making sure that it's available to us at all times. I mean, think about it. The government doesn't invest properly in it. Look at the condition of our grid. But after the first storm hit, the, the government, I'm sorry, 70%, uh, you know, when the, when the, the um, news talks about how, how far along we've come after a storm, the, you know, the, the, they say, well, they don't say, 70% of the houses are restored or built or rebuilt. They don't say 90% of the roads are passable. The matrix they use for recovery is what percent of the grid has been restored. After Irma hit, I found myself struggling to a solution for my, for my customers. None of them had power. So I flew out to Las Vegas for the... U.S. largest solar energy conference and storage conference. I was desperately searching for a solution for my customers that were out of power. I mean, there were many, solar, there were many battery companies out there that said they had the solution. But for one reason or another, they didn't meet our company's requirements. Fortunately, we had one of our existing suppliers step up and we were able to get power using 200 battery systems to our customers long before the power company was able to restore the power to the customers. Recovering, now that we're recovering from worst disaster in recent memory, we can rebuild the way we've always rebuilt, doing the same thing we've always done and have to do it again. But isn't the definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result? <laughs> Einstein didn't say that, but I like the quote anyways. <laughs> or we could do something different, something better. The timing, it's perfect. We're investing huge amounts of money in rebuilding the infrastructure. We, the, uh, renewables are cheaper for the first time in history than fossil fuels. Technology is moving at such a speed that even these technologies are becoming much more affordable. And the government, the British Virgin Islands government, says that serious can be part of this change. Whether the government helps, helpful, it would be great if they help. 
They need to step out of the way. The government helps or not needs to do our part towards resilience and sustainability. How, how do we do this? Number one, hurricane harden our homes. Learn from our vulnerabilities and rebuild better. Rebuild stronger. Number two, efficiency. Decisions that you make in your rebuilding process need to consider energy efficiency in everything that we do. And number three, invest in solar and batteries. It will allow us to help become more self-reliant and to give us the ability to become an asset to our community when the next inevitable storm hits, instead of a liability. I don't want to tell you, put on your oxygen mask first before helping others. Think about it. Is resilient and sustainable, and you planned ahead during the next inevitable storm that happens. Neighbors, electricity. You'll share your water. You'll share your refrigeration and your lights. You went out foraging for gasoline and ice and diesel. You'll be helping your neighbors in your community. Being resilient and sustainable is good in the short term and the long term. Our company has learned a lot from Irma and Maria. We've learned what works really well and what needs improvement. We've learned that our, conne our, our, con our connections, <laughs> our connections that <laughs> that hold our solar arrays on our roofs work great, but the connections that hold the solar arrays uh, to the panels, to the, the, panels to, the, to, the, to the racking systems, they need improvement. We know, we've learned that generators work great for a day or a week, but not so good for a month or longer. We've learned that, we've learned that our solar arrays are both on rooftops and batteries are sustainable and resilient, but centralized, large-scale solar farms, they don't do so well in these storms. Actually, most of our rooftops made it through the storm. We only lost about 15% of our panels last time around. What is hurricane hardening? What does that mean? Well, hurricane hardening means using better designs, better technology, better materials to make your home more durable. We know that metal roofs sustain way less damage than tile roofs or asphalt shingles. We know that flat roofs and hip roofs handle these storms better than gable roofs. Technical advances have led to a decrease in the cost of solar of 80% in the last 15 years. Actually, it cost half as much to produce power using solar and batteries than it does to buy electricity from the power company. Advances in lithium-ion technology have gotten so affordable that it's finally feasible to have an alternative to buying from the power company. With investment in solar and batteries, you'll save money and no longer suffer the indignities of frequent and sustained power outages. In the, you're, in the BVI today, you're allowed to install solar, but the return is not that great. 
There still needs to be government policy that needs to be implemented, and they say they're implementing it, to finalize their energy policy to make these investments even more affordable. This will help the BVI and government and its people with their stated goal of less reliance on imported fossil fuels. All island nations around the Caribbean have, are in a unique position to take us away from a fossil fuel-based infrastructure. Many of our harnessable, there are many forms of harnessable renewables, two of which are the biggest is wind and solar. We have some of the highest energy prices in the world. This, is, this makes most alternative forms of renewables feasible. When we, you know, these island nations use tourism as one of their drivers of the economy, we don't want to have a, an energy source that's going to compromise our beautiful beaches and our environment. Energy efficient technologies have made this so affordable. It's always been the case that energy efficiency has been a, the quickest return on investment. You know, you guys know these, these LED light bulbs? Down here, it's a four month return on investment. Our company takes a holistic approach. We look at everybody's energy use and the ability to produce solar to make the best return on investment for our customers. Not only an investment, but also to make them more resilient and sustainable. With your ability to produce your own electricity, the relationship that you have between yourself and the power company changes. Don't, don't try that at home. <laughs> um, it no longer is a necessity. It becomes a convenience, kind of like a landline phone or the cable company. These are very, very recent developments. This has only been the case in the past year. Ba uh, battery technology has just made a mon monumental shift. I tried to get approval from Elon to use his company's name up there, but you guys kind of know what, what, he, what his company is. Um, this is the year the first year where lithium ion batteries are now cheaper in their life cycle cost than lead acid batteries. We see this in the speed of adoption of energy storage around the world. In the United States alone, the battery storage is going to increase by 300% this year. All of this is within our reach. We can say we're waiting on the government to put their policies in place for us to make the first steps to do it, or we can wait on our neighbors for them to do it first. It's up to each and every one of us to take the first step and take it now. I have a vision for the future. This is my vision. My vision for future is that majority of the homes will have solar on the rooftops and batteries inside, and the businesses as well will enable a future that enable us to not only be users of electricity, but producers of electricity as well. A future that with a progressive government energy policy that will speed this transition. It's a future where you think of the power company, you don't think of them as selling you, taking your money and selling you dirty electricity, you think of them as being your power partner and providing you a marketplace for you to buy electricity, but also to sell energy that you produce, a local, green, renewable resource in which you own. It's a future where the, all the cars, trucks, vans, 
buses, ferries, are powered by green, clean, locally sourced renewables. It's a, pu it's a future that will bounce back in half the time with less loss of life, with less investment, and less disruption when the next inevitable storm comes. It's a future where the island nations of the Caribbean will take the lead into a better tomorrow. Thank you very much.